Hi there, welcome to The Revampires. This is Emily, and today we have a very exciting package to open. We recently made our very first purchase from Shimmerlocks and wanted to do a little first impressions of what we got. So far we've worked with a lot of yarn when it comes to doll hair, but we wanted to spread our wings and see what some quality nylon could do for us. Right off the bat, there's an adorable sticker keeping the tissue together. I appreciate this. Oh my gosh, look at all this hair! Each hank comes in a labeled bag wrapped with a twist tie, and it's pretty darn long. Very smooth and silky, I just kept wanting to pet it the whole time. So in our haul, we got two hanks of limelight, two hanks of chestnut, two hanks of cotton candy, two hanks of marina, two hanks of pumpkin delight, two hanks of nightmare, three hanks of powder puff, Two packages of their pastel rainbow set, which comes with six mini hanks. Such a beautiful color scheme. And one hank of starlight steel, which is a metallic. There was a business card in the package as well. I am absolutely in love with the adorable mascot characters. The colors are just mwah, so delicious. So now we have a giant pile of beautiful hair and I can't wait to dig in to use it. So how about we just grab it all and see what this stuff can really do? I think I'll use this cotton candy color. And our victim will be this Monster High Twyla. She originally came to us with chopped hair and smudged eyebrows, not to mention no arms, so she's been in desperate need of a makeover for a while. Plus, I think this color will really suit her. I start off by cutting the hank in half and keep it secure with a spare twist tie on the table. To reroute hair, we just use a needle with the eye cut in an angle shoved into an X-Acto knife handle. One tip is to look for embroidery needles since they tend to have bigger eyes. There's also a bit of hot glue at the other end just to keep it secure. Then just take a small piece of hair, feed it onto the needle, and poke it into one of the holes. I just do a few plugs at the back to start and get an idea of what it looks like rooted. Spoiler alert, it looks like hair. <laughs> There's one more quick test I want to do before really diving in. I want to see how this hair curls. Let's prop Twyla up on the styling stand. Sorry guys, I don't know why I had the camera so close here. <laughs> Anyway, I wrap the hair around straws and secure them with tinfoil and bobby pins. Once they're ready, I give them a boil wash and wait for them to dry overnight before releasing. Look at that curl! It held perfectly. Not that I'm surprised, but it still looks gorgeous. Let's split the curls and give it just a tap with the brush. Oh, it looks so cute! Yep, no doubt about it. Twyla needs a full head of these, like, right now. But first, let's do what I should have done earlier and paint the scalp to match the new hair. For the rest of the plugging process, I ended up cutting the hanks into fourths, which still gave me a decent amount of length, I'm impressed. 
Here's how far I got with the first tank. And this is what she looked like when I stopped. I didn't end up using the entire second hank. This was how much I had left. But I was overconfident and thought the hair was full enough. I was wrong. Don't listen to me. <laughs> One thing to note is that on the Shimmerlocks website, it recommends getting two ounces of hair if you are rerouting a Monster High or Ever After High doll, but we would say that that definitely depends on the length and the style that you are going for. For most of the colors that we ended up getting, we got just one ounce of them, two half ounce packages, and I would say for a medium length or shorter hairstyle, one ounce of hair is right on the money for these kinds of dolls. But you know what? Now that I'm looking at her with this beautiful hair and a blank face, I can't help it. I have to repaint her as well. She deserves it, right? I reattached the head and body at this point so I don't risk damaging the face later <clears throat> and prep her for spraying. Using a tip I saw from Middle Rabbit, I cover the hair with a sock and then carefully pin it close to the hairline. I'm glad I chose the duckies. She looks like she's ready for a cozy spa day. To repaint the face, I'll be using Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant, which is a known carcinogen, so only spray it outside and only when wearing one of these bad boys. Let's get cracking. Actually, at the last minute, I wrapped some masking tape around her neck so the fibers wouldn't get up onto her face. Okay, now we're good. With an initial two layers of sealant, I start sketching her eyes with watercolor pencil, then immediately jump into blushing with pastels because I'm nervous. I have no idea what I'm going for. I just know I want her to be cute. A little bit of gray around the edges. And I think I'll keep the lips neutral. I sketch the eyebrows with pencil and then fill them in with pastel. The nice thing since I have no plan is that Twyla's face has very defined eyes, so I can just follow the existing shape and I know that they'll look good. A bit of white for highlighting and just a bit more shadow in the crease. Now, this whole time I've been mulling over what color her eyes should be. I put together a few mock-ups and took to Instagram with a poll, but I was naughty and did not go with the winning color. I just feel like I've done so many dolls with bluish eyes already, I just needed something different. So I went with the runner-up, which was a deep berry, and I actually used eyeshadow to block out the flat color. You obviously still need Mr. Super Clear to keep it on there, but honestly, an old makeup palette is not a bad place to start at all if you're looking to get into this. I also used eyeshadow to deepen the lips just a bit. I start building up the scleras and the tear ducts. I'm really looking to improve my tear duct game. I like to deepen the lash lines with something more colorful before going to black. I think it gives the eyes just a bit more dimension. In this case, I'm using a deep purple. <laughs> Look how tiny my black pencil is. Let's hatch 
some hairs on the eyebrows. Be careful not to overdo it. Pretty sure this was when I sprayed a new layer of sealant. When I come back, I start sketching some white freckles and the indication of teeth, because why not, I guess? I mark out the pupils and then start adding highlights and shadows to the irises. Eyelashes are always terrifying. I was apparently really in the zone when working on this face up because I am really struggling to keep her in frame. I am so sorry. <laughs> But this is the easiest part of the process, just building up the color that's already there. It's kind of like a coloring book. Just a couple more details and I'm ready to move on to acrylic paint, which I thin with water. I go for a starburst effect with the light pink highlights. Then beef up the white on the teeth and the eyes. Freckle time! After beefing up the blacks as well, she's almost done, but I want to add some mica powder for an extra touch. I mix the colors to what I want and then add water until it's almost a paste consistency. After one last spray of sealant, I add catch lights, which are almost as terrifying as lashes. And that's the face! Dubious teeth effect aside, I am super pleased. After everything's fully dry, I add gloss varnish to the eyes and the lips, and now we can remove all of the covering. Aw, the hair looks so good with the face. I'm in love. She definitely needs some styling though, so let's get that taken care of. I give her a first boil wash to tame everything down. Although I forgot to cover her face with something because I'm an idiot apparently, and well, I wouldn't call the sealant damaged necessarily, but there is definitely a texture that wasn't there before. Anyway, it's not that noticeable and we're moving on. <laughs> Let's give her bangs an initial cut so I know where they are and trim down those long test pieces in the back. Then it's just a matter of getting all of this onto curlers. Wow! <laughs> This is either going to look amazing or ridiculous. I am hoping for the former. Here she is dry from the final wash. Let's take the straws out. 
She did end up with some rust spots, but most of them are in the back where you can't see. Okay, I'm in love with this. How freaking cute! Split the curls. Trim the bangs and the scraggly ends. And that's the hair done. I am super impressed with the Shimmer Locks hair. It holds a style really well and it's pretty easy to work with. I threw on some random extra clothes just so she's not naked for the final shots. She still needs arms after all, this is not her final form. But I think we'll call it here at least for now. Thank you so much for watching. You can support the video by giving it a like, and if you want to see what doll projects we do in the future, then consider subscribing to the channel. Bye.